Uh, so welcome to all of you. Uh, good afternoon to my colleagues uh, from Asia Pacific and uh, good morning from Europe. Uh, my name is Maciej Leszak. I'm a head of the Department of Cardiology and University Hospital in Poznań, Poland. Uh, and I have a, a great privilege uh, to chair this APT medical session uh, with my uh, Asian colleagues. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Dr. Mohamed Ali from, from Malaysia, uh, uh, Dr. Bimo uh, uh, from Indonesia, Dr. Dosat uh, from Indonesia. And uh, we will all share with you uh, our knowledge on uh, what's new in interventional cardiology uh, what's the progress and how can we use the uh, new, newly developed tools uh, in our daily practice. Uh, but before we start with this, let me uh, show you some few slides and on the history because I was thinking when I was thinking of how to start the meeting, I think it will be very good for my Asian colleagues to know how it all started. And it started, look, more than almost 44 years ago. Actually, in one week time, there will be a 44th anniversary of the first angioplasty, which happened in Zurich, Switzerland in 1977, 16 of September, and was performed, by, but I think you, you all know a German-born uh, physician, Andreas Grinzink, who, who worked in, 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 in Switzerland at that time. So he was uh, really uh, brave enough to, to, to construct uh, uh, this kind of device like balloon angioplasty, uh, angioplasty balloon. Uh, it was all homemade uh, gear. So you, you see this uh, Grinzink's kitchen when, when they when he worked with, uh, with his colleague, Maria Schlumpf. And so they produced with their own hands uh, balloons, uh, glue with, the, them with the, their own glue, dry it in the, in the kitchen oven. Uh, and uh, they did a really a great job. Uh, uh, so on the above, uh, you see the, the, the LED stimulus. Uh, and you know that Andreas Grinzig died in 1985 in a plane crash in, in, in United States. But what you see at the bottom uh, on the right hand side of the slide, uh, that's the 20th anniversary of this uh, procedure, exactly 16 of September in 1997. Uh, and I had a privilege to, 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 to be there. I was invited and uh, 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 on my left hand side, uh, left hand side uh, sitting is the first Andreas Grinzig patient. Uh, you see, looking very healthy and in a very good shape. And uh, another twenty year, uh, twenty years passed, and uh, in uh, two thousand seventeen, I had another privilege to meet with the same patient. Now you see the patient is uh, seventy eight years old. He's still alive. He never had a bypass graft. Uh, of course, he had some additional angioplasties with stands, of course, uh, but uh, I, I, I think that this, this gentleman is still alive uh, now in his uh, 80s, so he's now uh, 80, 80, 82 now. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, you know, proof uh, that this kind of uh, procedure uh, 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 and this kind of invention uh, uh, led to a great uh, progress in the in, in a human in a, in a whole medical uh, fields. So with millions of, of PCI performed uh, uh, each year, I guess. Uh, so having said that, now let me introduce uh, our first speak speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Ali, uh, who will be talking about uh, uh, a new kind of uh, uh, access to coronaries. Uh, it's like four years uh, when the, this procedure, this technique has been uh, published. Uh, and the title is uh, Distal in Radio, Close to Success. So Dr. Ali, please. 
All right, thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction, Professor Alicia, as well as the APT uh, Symposia uh, case sharing session. So I've been uh, invited to share some of my experiences of the new uh, 1.7 French microcat in the complex uh, PCIs. So these are some of my latest cases that I've done to share. Um, I've uh, experienced with many types of microcatheters in my cat lab for the complex PCIs. And this is one of the latest in the, in the sort of edition. Uh, it's a unique 1.7 French uh, microcatheter uh, with the perfect distal ID, uh, which is good for the regular wires. Uh, also, if a superior fix to the control of the guide wire is uh, so far, my experience shows excellent crossability and have the crossability to entrance to the complex lesions. Generally, we know the guide wires, um, I mean, the microcatheter helps in the guide wire exchange. It definitely needed to simplify the C2O cases, uh, especially in terms of the enhance the backup for the support for guide wire. And also it's useful for the microcatheter for the tip injections. And it also saves the contrast, especially when coming from the retrograde interventions. And the, the last is a precision, the target versus selections. So these are the usefulness uh, of the microcatheter in general, and also what I find using the uh, new uh, sort of micro. So I show, I'll show four cases how I use this catheter uh, in my case. Uh, first is the, a, a patient came to me for PCI to subtotal the complex arteries. You can see there's a very tight disease here, and also along the way it's a diffuse and there's a tight lesion. So uh, initially I will try without the wire, but it's uh, because of this bigger, uh, and then there's a very, another angle you can see almost like hairline sort of entries. So I'm showing only one projection. So I use the uh, micro catheter APT micro together with the field XDR wires is easily able to cross the lesion in this particular case. After that, I use the APT, sorry, I, I use, I use the APT micro catheter subsequently, I changed the, into the workhorse wire. Okay, that's also useful. One is the micro catheter to guide you to the entrance of the uh, stiff wire. After that, you can use the micro catheter, exchange the regular workhorse wire, then subsequently dilate the lesion. And finally, I managed to finish the case with, uh, with a nice uh, two stents. So this is the, the first case uh, among the cases, earlier cases I've done. And then subsequently, the same patient having a CTO to the uh, LED artery. You can see I need to take a double guide uh, uh, access. Want to see the distal collateral coming from the right coronary artery. And then the proximal part of the CTO comes here, even quite diffuse from the proximal. And here is actually, there's a sum. Uh, it's not really in a true lumen. If you look at multiple projection, actually there's a sum bridging collateral, right? So I use the APT microcatheter and then I use the filter. Actually, initially I tried to probe in whether it can go through the loose tissue or the microchannel, but unfortunately it's not able to go through in the true lumen looking at the multiple projections, right? Subsequently, I need to change the wire with the APT microcatheter with the Gaia 2 uh, wires. And then with uh, another projection, so able to enter into the branch and able to pull back. And then finally, it went into the true LED artery. So again, looking at another view. And finally, uh, it is uh, successfully entered into the true lumen after pre-dilatation and then uh, put in the stand, so it was it was a very good good result. Then I show you another case of uh, case two where the patient having a PCI to the CTO arteries, and this patient had been following up with me for quite some time. Initially came to me uh, almost like fifteen years ago. He was having a, a doubly committed uh, ventricular septal defect. In fact, though these are one of the early cases we have ex uh, experience of using PFM coil. Classically, we have a doubly completed VST, always patients go for the surgery. This is some of our early experience of using the, the coil type of intervening uh, VSDs. And patient was, at that time, the coronaries was normal. And then throughout the years, he had other risk factors come. And then finally had a, a chest discomfort. We take a look, he has a CTO to the, uh, the single vessel disease, a CTO to the, to the LED. And in fact, was coming from the very osteal itself. It's, you can see it's a very, uh, you know, very acute angulated large left means. So 
I use the filter XDR with the APT micro. It gives me a very good support and able to uh, navigate the, the wire and able to give me a good support. The, otherwise, without this micro cutter, difficult to angle the wire. We, as we know, in a CTO intervention, you need to do a fine uh, uh, shaping of the tip of the wire so that you have a one-to-one -one talk. So you need to have a good micro cutter able to navigate the, uh, the wires into the true lumen of the CTO. So after quite uh, looking at multiple projection, uh, then this is uh, aleocranial uh, views. And finally, they're able to crack. There's a one hard plug there. Finally, with the Gaia second wire is able to crack and able to go through to the enter into the true lumen. And finally, after lesion preparation, uh, successfully able to uh, stand the CTO lesion and all the way from the proximal, you can see very nice result coming from the osteal all the way to the mid distal LED. I come to my third case. This is another case of CTO with uh, PCI to the CTO RCA, right corner artery. You can say, so we need to do a double injection again, right corner artery, the XB RCA give us a very good support as well as XB LED. So my, my first plan to uh, intervene anti-greatly, failing which uh, then we have to come to retrograde looking at this channel. So there's a probability there's a very long lesion. So I use again the APT microcata quite nicely able to thread through and then using the filter XDR. Uh, and then at one particular spot, they will have a very hard calcium. I change to Gaia's second wire and then uh, with... Uh, Few maneuvering, looking at the multiple projection, finally able to enter into the uh, true lumen. Now you can see I'm sliding through, slide through the APT microcata across the CTO uh, to the distal. Uh, subsequently, I, I managed to exchange with the regular workhorse run through floppy wire and finally uh, remove the APT uh, microcatheter. And finally, uh, after pre dilatation, and this is after stenting of the arteries uh, with the distal drug eluting balloon and proximal part of it, we put in a uh, true drug eluting stent. So this is a very uh, good result then. Another case four, it's my last case, it's a, a case of a retrograde C2 intervention with a rendezvous technique. It's a very long RCA C2, it's very, uh, very complicated. You can see it's a very long CTO and a lot of bridging collaterals and also we have uh, the uh, LED artery at the mid LED, there's a, uh, there's a disease as well. So uh, trying in the integrate is going to be pretty tough uh, by coming through the retrograde intervention. Also, it will be a little bit of tricky, especially if, if, if I fail to access to this, if I go to the second, there's all, uh, obviously the potential compromising to the LED. So these are the things I need to, uh, so I try in the proximal, uh, the, the first septal without uh, uh, you know, injuring or causing any problem to the plug at the sort of LED using a Sion blue wire with the Corsair. And then uh, subsequently I did the tip injection, finding which is the septal which are connecting to the, uh, to the RCA. Then using the Sion blue wire, uh, then it managed to easily slide through. Of course, you can use other wires such as uh, SWAR O3, also it's a good wire too. Uh, a channel tracking go into the. So after that, I use the filter XDA. Well, you can see it's very difficult to navigate into. It easily goes out from the uh, true lumen. You can see it's not really connecting. And then I use the filter XDR. Uh, this a lot of fibrotic disease, and this is the area that's a lot of calcium. So this is so much that the wire able to track to retrogradely. And then I brought the APT microcarrier integrately using the filter XDA uh, with, the, with the guide from the retrograde able to find as close as possible. Finally, it's able to enter here uh, into one of the small branch here. So, and subsequently I did the reverse cut technique, putting a balloon to dilate approximately and retrogradely is a conquest pro wire right? after dilating. Of course, there's a few techniques you can use. You can use this technique or another way you can bring uh, down the uh, you know, guide extension, probably you know, then you can directly try to enter from the retrograde into the integrate. So what I did this particular case after uh, 
uh, reverse cut technique, I try to navigate the wire, try to enter into the guide uh, itself. So after a few minutes, successfully enter. And I have this APT microcatheter here. You can see that uh, this I zoom up and retrocate wire. I try to enter into the APT microcat. So it's after, uh, usually you can do this technique, either this at the first band there, or sometimes the higher up. So this is a most of the time, find it quite uh, relatively easy to do the renderable technique. So finally, the wire went into the uh, APT microcat. And now I push down the microcatheter. Sometimes if it doesn't work uh, pushing down, you can do a kissing technique. You can bring down the retrogate microcat and integrate. You can, while one pushing, you can withdraw that. Uh, you can withdraw. So this, you can show the APT microcat is sliding down quite, quite smoothly into the, the distal part of the true. So you can see, I'm, I'm demonstrating here, it, this is not a quite easy lesion. Despite that, the guide was sticking out. I have to use the anchor wire in this particular case to support the guide. Of course, the other, you can use the guide extension as well. There's another uh, way of stabilizing the guide. So after the, I'm quite happy the APT guide went all the way quite, quite distal part, removing the retrograde wires, right? After that, I used the APT, uh, through the APT, used the work, regular workhorse wire all the way to the true lumen. And then finally, uh, sort of dilating the, the lesion. This is after dilatation. And this is after uh, the vessel was was tented. So you have a very nice uh, sort of result. Uh, this after that, I checked the the other arteries. It looks okay. Not the person it was planned for stage to do a FFR here before deciding whether to intervene the mid LED. Then, so these are some of my cases. Uh, even before I come to the presentation earlier, I did another case of nice CTO with the APT. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, I'm quite happy at the moment using this another additional state-of-the-art tool to assist in the successful treatment for my complex cases, especially in a CTO lesion. With that, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for your great presentation. And of course, I apologize for my mistake. Uh, the first topic was uh, dedicated to microcatheters and uh, we will hear about you know, distal radial in a couple of minutes. So that was really a great uh, presentation uh, on uh, how microcatheters can help in, uh, in um, uh, doing uh, complex procedures. But uh, we, we have a couple of minutes uh, for discussion. So let me ask uh, uh, a first question, which is a, a really very practical. And I think I'm, I'm really sure that uh, most of our young colleagues uh, who now are listening to, to, the, to this webinar will want to know. So what, how, what technique do you use to remove the microcatheter after you exchange the wire? Yeah? Because we have a couple of techniques. Uh, so what, what's your technique of choice? Uh, I mean, if you're talking about absolute safety, somebody we are using in the first time of this kind of microcatheter experience, is it safer if you use the balloon trapper technique and then you remove okay. it? But in my uh, experience of using a lot of microcatheter, I find it basically I use my this uh, you know indeflator, very slow inflation, looking at the tip of the of the wire and going up slowly, filling up the microcatheter goes up to roughly about ten to twelve atmosphere, constant pressure. I pull up. Uh, I so far I haven't encountered any. That's also in a way a safe one balloon if, <laughs> if you need to use. So of course, if you are not very familiar with this technique. Trapper technique is very, very safe, yeah. Especially yeah, so, we have a stiff wire down there. So you mentioned two techniques. One is flushing out the microcatheter with your indeflator, which is relatively easy and works in majority of cases, but not in 100%, yeah? So, yes, yes. Uh, and there is a one, you know, caution, uh, 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 one precaution that uh, if you have a, a very stiff wire or hydrophilic, uh, uh, tapered wired and you go very high with pressure like 14 yeah. or more you may mm. uh, perforate uh, the oh. distal uh, distal vessel so so do it very very gently as you mentioned slowly uh, we usually go to up to 12 um, 14 atmospheres mm. but slowly observing mm. the the wire so so that's that's great technique a trapping technique is a technique that works in 100 percent 
of cases, mm -hmm. uh, providing you, um, you inflate your balloon, trapping balloon to, to the desired pressure. And when you use six French catheter, then uh, my default is to zero balloon to trap the wire, then you can do it very safely. In seven French catheter, I can tell you uh, two zero balloon works too. So you can use two zero balloon, but it's safer to use 2.5, then uh, your wire will be trapped. And of course, we still have on a, 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 a at least in Europe available, especially uh, trapping balloons for, for who make it very easy because they are sure they will not go out uh, of the guiding catheter. Uh, so so this is uh, this is this is easy. And there is still one or two more uh, techniques. You can use a 300 uh, centimeters wire, but I think nobody has this kind of wires. Uh, 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 on a shelf, uh, uh, on the, you know the special like rota wire or, or uh, uh, wires for uh, externalization, uh, and and some people still use the the the, the extension wire. Yeah, so so uh, I don't have it in, on my shelf. I don't use it, but but there are available to majority of wires. So 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 you can do it uh, this way as well. Yeah, mm. but flashing out the micro catheter is mm. is is really really. Mm, very, uh, very useful and and very 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 easy tool. Uh, I'm looking for a chat whether there are some questions from the uh, from the audience, and I I don't see it uh, uh, as for now. Uh, so uh, then my question will be uh, when I, I, when you do your procedures, the complex procedures, I notice for for CTO, do you use six French or seven French catheters in in, in most of cases? Nowadays, after having your, all the good wires, I will go by six French. Only a very mm -hmm. selected when I expecting to do a retrograde intervention, I expecting a very diffuse long disease, you know, more complex. Then I bring in a seven French. Relatively. Shorter, most of my CTOs nowadays are six French by radio. Yeah, yeah we, we, we try to, to do more and more cases with radial approach, but seven French. Now, now you have, you know, this kind of shifts is uh, seven and six. So, so the outer diameter of seven French shift uh, is yeah. like uh, six French. Uh, so, okay. so you can do it safely, especially in European population, even in, in women. Uh, it's not a big uh, deal to to deliver a seven French catheter, and it's always easier. Then instead of using uh, um, anchor wire, you can use anchor balloon, for example. In in the case, yes. the last one you you you, you presented, uh, and also my comment uh, on the regarding the last case, uh, you did uh, you open the right corner artery, and then you say that. You will measure. You said you, you will measure the the physiology of the LAD, which is a really good uh, 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 order of uh, of the procedures. Because uh, if you measure the the FFR or IFR or, or whatever uh, physiology in the LAD, having occluded the right coronary artery, then the result could be false positive. Yeah, because uh, well, in this situation. Yeah. LAD supplies a, a, a huge territory of the of the myocardium, uh, both on the uh, on the uh, anterior as well as inferior wall of the of, of left ventricle, uh, and then of course uh, um, physiology could be positive, uh, but after opening of the right coronary artery, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the, the the LAD may turn out to be. Uh, insignificant. Yeah? So, so this is really, uh, really uh, what we should do. The first to open the the, the uh, total occlusion uh, and then check physiology in the other vessels. So I don't know. Uh, are there any uh, more comments from 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 you or from uh, our uh, speakers panelists? Yeah, I think I completely agree. I mean, these are the techniques, as you say, that uh, we do have in my cat lab some of the long wires. Uh, you know, in case, uh, because we do other procedures, we do have long wires. Uh, and another thing, the guide extension, uh, sorry, the wire extension, nowadays is uh, very much, uh, uh, even in my lab, is once in a while, is somewhere will be lying down there. But we have moved away from that. Uh, you know, those days, there's not much option. We used to use, use the extension wire, right, as you say. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree, of course, of course. Okay, so if there are no um, more comments uh, or questions, uh, 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 just to remind you that we will be happy to, to have some questions from the, from the audience. Uh, uh, let's go to the, to the next uh, presentation. Uh, and this time, uh, this presentation uh, will um, uh, be dedicated to the distal radial approach. So the, so the title is Distal in Radial, uh, Close to Success. Uh, and uh, the talk will be delivered by Dr. Bimo uh, from Indonesia. Dr. Bimo, please. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, I would like to share my slide. Okay, so hello everyone, thank you for having me. I'm great to be here and it's an honor for me to be seated with you all sharing and learning about this topic today uh, in managing complex uh, PCI cases. First of all, I would like to greet Professor Masyat Lejak from Poznan University Medical Science Poland and Dr. Dato Muhammad Ali bin Abdul Qadir from Hospital Pulau Penang, Malaysia and Dr. Dasat, the senior interventionist uh, from Bethsaida Hospital Indonesia and all the participants who join me. So my name is Mio Bintoro and I'm going to be sharing with you my first cases of distal transradial access. To begin with, I think it's uh, very important to us to review that the uh, radial versus uh, femoral because the, we all know that the standard uh, proximal radial approach from the wrist has many advantages over the femoral approach, especially for significant reduction of access site bleeding, and also for vascular complication. This uh, allows the safe performance of same day discharge diagnostic and also the pro uh, interventional procedure in stable patient. And even we see the mortality benefit has been proven in patient with acute coronary syndrome. Therefore, the uh, radial artery is now generally recommended over transfemoral access for both stable and acute patient in PCI procedures. But unfortunately, there is a, uh, the conventional transradial approach has uh, apa, uh, has a high incidence of uh, radial artery occlusion in some meta analysis showing around seven to eight percent. So these are the advantages of distal radial access. The benefits are firstly minimize the risk of hand ischemia, and it has advantages for hemostasis, shortened time, and greater comfort for the patient and the operator. And the seat is also will be secured with less movement in the distal segment. And also will have a reduction in nursing staff's time. And also this distal radial artery access will leave additional arterial access option open for crossover. So we see from, uh, I think from the JAC uh, that recently published, the per protocol is around uh, 8%. And if we did the uh, distal radial approach, uh, it will lessen to 2% for the radial artery occlusion. But it still have many challenges uh, to do the dis distal transradial artery access and we'll have a, and if we want to do this, then we have to think the ideal device for it. Because this snuff box, we are, in, uh, we are trying to aim to puncture uh, compared to radial access, it has a mild tortosity and a smaller caliber. So this small size could also result in high rate of vessel spasm and occlusion also if we don't have the ideal device. So the ideal device for this distal transradial artery access is we have to have a seat with the outer diameter is equal or even smaller than the inner lumen diameter of the artery. And the artery to seat size ratio is as close to one as possible to minimize the risk of occluded both the radial or distal radial artery occlusion. But not only good, it will also have to be navigated through tortosity and has to have uh, anti-king or king resistance because it will uh, down, downstream to the radial artery and uh, crossing a mild tortosity. Uh, this, is, this is what we will see at the angiography appearance. Uh, 
uh, and compare, comparing to the radial artery entry point, the distal radial artery has much uh, smaller in diameter, and these are uh, our puncture uh, area. And from the DAPRO trial, the average of proximal radial artery is ranging uh, from study to study. I think the we are still waiting for the uh, big study. Uh, it's only single center, but uh, averaging from 2.7 uh, in radial artery and distal in the snuff box was around 2.4 uh, millimeter. So this is my cases. Uh, this is the left main coronary artery thrombus. I present you a case uh, with a 62 years old gentleman. Actually, he was uh, planned to do angiography due to stable angina and a positive uh, treadmill test. So the angina was uh, induced by exercise, relief with resting with the risk factor of dyslipidemia and family history. There was no history of heart attack before admission. Uh, physical examination was uh, remarkable. The laboratory results so uh, great, and he was on dual antiplatelet, clopidogrel, aspirin, statin, and a beta blocker. ECG so no uh, significant finding. Uh, there is no history of acute myocardial infarction. His NGO showing the right coronary system, no significant disease, but there is a collateral to the, his LED, and his LED was shown uh, diffusely diseased and subtotally occluded from the in proximal and the distal part after his diagonal. And the search was no just moderately diseased, around 40 to 50 percent of stenosis. And you can appreciate there's the distal left main, there is a thrombus there because so. Uh, we are quite surprised because this patient was in stable condition, but uh, this patient was then continued to be hospitalized for, for antiplatelet because uh, at the time we don't know whether he's taken the drugs or not. We did a hep heparinize the patient and plan to do the PCI in optimal anticoagulation. So I did PCI in, uh, I asked at the at the time, I asked permission to do distal transradial access and did the PCI for uh, this patient. Uh, we performed the left main LED uh, PCI uh, in double wire with the floppy wire all the way down to the cells. The LED part was hardly nego uh, negotiate, but we are able to pass the wire to the distal part of the LED. But at the time, uh, we were planning for IFUS crossing to see what's going on at the left main, but after we dilate with 2.515 millimeter balloon, the uh, thrombus went distally, and there is no flow uh, to the his distal of uh, LED. See here the so uh, we then we then uh, prepare the lesion. Uh, with 2.515, that was already placed uh, in the guiding catheter. Uh, and when we get flow back uh, in his LED, but the pressure still went down, the patient was still in pain. Uh, after that, the thrombus was shifting. Uh, if we did the balloon to the surge, it was shifting to the uh, LED uh, and if we did the balloon to the LED and we're shifting to the uh, search. So at the time we decided to perform a simultaneous kissing balloon uh, and plan, implant the 3.038 uh, DS uh, aiming to the, uh, from his uh, osteal of the reflectment to the distal part of his uh, LED. Uh, you can appreciate here there is uh, some thrombus after the uh, implantation of the stent to the cerx. And we also did the flaring of the balloon to the osteal part of the left man at the 20 atmosphere of ATA. And because uh, the shifting thrombus to the cerx, then we recross the wire uh, from the search to the LED and LED to the search and did 
uh, another simultaneous kissing balloon inflation and finalize it with the uh, with the uh, pot uh, we have a good distal runoff uh, vessel and angiographically there is no thrombus was uh, seen and we were able to achieve a T three flow in this patient the patient was went home at the second day and we were we were planning to do an imaging evaluation for this patient but at the time we were all happy with the result and just uh, uh, stabilize the patient the patient has no more symptom of chest pain and the blood pressure was uh, coming up so the patient was uh, uh, sent home on his, uh, I think, third day of hospitalization after his PCI. So this was my first case of the transradial, uh, distal transradial artery. So as hemostasis, uh, maybe it was uh, more convenient for, uh, for hemostasis to take uh, in distal radial artery uh, compared to the conventional radial artery approach because there is a reliable compression hemostasis thanks to surrounding anatomy and no venostasis because the absence of major forearm venous compression and radial artery blood flow doesn't get blocked despite the compression of distal puncture point. So, and patient will feel more comfortable and hand dysfunction related to compression bandage. And this is, these are my disclosure and from APT Medical, uh, they have a great Hemostasis introduces it with triple layer, created thin wall and anti-bending structure. The outer was a polymer layer, so it will make the vessel less uh, prone to have a sp spasm. And the second one is mesh braided middle layer so to have an anti-kinking resistance and the PTFA inner layer. And for the strength and dur durability, the this braided slender seat has three layer tubular body structure, which has a quite good strength uh, for anti king, uh, anti, anti kinking, and good hydrophilic cutting to reduce friction. While the operator holding section, uh, this, uh, for this, this side of coating to reduce slippage. And also, uh, probably Professor also mentioned earlier that. Uh, they have, uh, compared to the conventional, the APT seat is uh, much smaller in the outer diameter, uh, what we call the slender seat, the, and they have uh, 6.5 friends that allows us to do uh, conventional PCI with balloon and stand, stand and stand, and also rotablator um, up to 1.75 uh, millimeter of burr. So uh, these are my uh, last slide. The distal radial artery access is a reliable, safe, effective, and well suited for all kinds of coronary interventions procedure compared to the traditional artery endpoint uh, and uh, radial artery entry point. So I think uh, there is still. Uh, ongoing trial, the that a uh, big trial that was coming on hopefully this year that uh, show us that that will show us that this uh, procedure is uh, safe and effective. And we previously presented a case of left main distal thrombus, and after struggling with the thrombus, PCI result was acceptable. And through the uh, entry point of distal transradial access. Uh, it was safely done with the, uh, we can perform a simultaneous kissing balloon in patient uh, through this uh, distal transradial access. Uh, at present, I'm still in my learning curve to do this distal transradial approach. Uh, I'm doing it uh, uh, this uh, moment for uh, diagnostic uh, angiography as my default strategy. Uh, and some of my uh, simple PCI cases. Okay, thank you for your kind attention and looking forward to hear the discussion from uh, 
the panelists. Thank you so much for this uh, great presentation. Uh, I'm really impressed, you know, how with this uh, distal access, uh, uh, this tiny archery, you can really perform a complex procedure. Uh, and uh, I have a couple of questions. I'm not a great, you know, distal radio user, so I, I hope I will learn from you too. Uh, so, <clears throat> do you have any any tips and tricks to share? If, I mean, we all know that this distal radial archery is a little bit smaller in diameter. Uh, it's more prone to 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 spasm, uh, and there is some tortuosity in this vessel. So, do you use some special, you know, uh, cocktail uh, uh, to 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 avoid these complications or? Or some other techniques like like patient premedication, or, or everything you do is the same as for a regular radial uh, approach. Actually, uh, at uh, at this time, the the cocktail is we use uh, just as uh, we did on the radial approach, the mm -hmm. heparin 70, 70 until one hundred unit per uh, kilogram weight, and mm -hmm. In Indonesia, we we just have a dilator, a vasodilator is a nitrates. So uh, I gave uh, nitrates usually for about uh, 300 uh, micrograms, but mm -hmm. for distal transradial, uh, probably I, I will have a patient on uh, 400 micrograms, and uh, and also heparin is at the uh, 100 unit per kilogram or around 5000 for diagnostic angiography so once you once you uh, five, your, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry yes. professor sorry. yes so so um, my second question is uh, is this currently your default strategy for intervention or you're still in 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 in, in a learning phase or uh, or actually what's the what's the learning curve what do you think about uh, um, the learning curve uh, how many procedures can you perform to, uh, perform to be, you know, a routine user of, of this approach? And do you think it really can be a routine default strategy for for most of PCI cases? Yeah, it's a heavy question <laughs> because uh, I think back uh, back to the history of the femoral to radial approach, the distal transradial artery approach or uh, access uh, has uh, has also its advantages because uh, uh, at the at present I'm using it for diagnostic uh, angiography professor. So uh, usually uh, in my learning curve, I did uh, ultrasound guiding to just make sure the uh, the vessel is has a caliber of above two millimeters, so I more comfortable to uh, place a uh, five friends sit there to do the diagnostic angiography. So uh, the learning curve was uh, for me. Uh, I'm still in my learning curve, and I don't I don't do the PCI routinely from distal transradial access, and as my learning curve. Uh, at this time, I did uh, uh, most of my angiography from distal transradial artery as a default strategy. Okay, uh, but is a radial approach uh, to you and in your, at your institution uh, a default strategy or, or you still do a lot of femoral uh, cases? Uh, the default uh, at present is uh, the radial artery. Because uh, I did the distal transradial artery approach as a default strategy, because if we fail the puncture the distal and we can have we can have we can still have the uh, radial artery. So I think it's uh, as a learning curve, uh, it's mm -hmm. worthwhile to to do. Okay. Uh, if there is no more questions, any comments from 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 the other speakers? Then I have uh, some short comments uh, on the on your case. Uh, 
which was a complex left main. So just to make everything clear, the guiding catheter you used was six French? Six French uh, EBU, Professor. Okay, EBU six French. This is uh, my default shape uh, uh, for left uh, intervention, left coronary artery interventions, 3.5 EBU. Uh, this is the guide I, I use in, in most of my cases. Uh, and that was the, a very nice demonstration of provisional technique because you started with uh, a single stenting st strategy and actually you, you, you finalize your strategy with, uh, with a single stent, yeah? yeah Am I correct? Single stent. Yes, uh, uh, with a single so, stent. Yeah, so that was very nice presentation. Uh, how uh, nice result, optimal result you can, you can obtain uh, uh, with uh, single stand strategy for the left main. Uh, we still use uh, just one stand uh, in, in, in vast majority of, uh, of cases of, of left main. And of course, my only issue is that you use a three old drug eluting stand, stand yeah. which uh, at least for our population in Europe, mm, not every stand uh, three zero uh, has the expansion limit uh, uh, so high that you could go to because in 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 Europe uh, we do for left main uh, pot at least with four point five if not five zero balloon yeah so so then most of three point five stent will uh, 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 will adapt to this uh, uh, diameter uh, yeah. whereas not every three zero stent can be safely uh, expanded uh, up to five zero. Yeah? So that was my, 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 only, my only comment. I think in your population, you deal with uh, in Indonesia, uh, perhaps this strategy is okay, yeah? because uh, if, uh, uh, it, 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 diameters, coronary artery diameters in Asian population are slightly uh, smaller than, than European or American. So perhaps this strategy would be, is, is acceptable in, in and of course, if in doubt, I would check uh, with uh, intravascular uh, imaging. imaging. So, Professor, but I would like to have uh, your comment. Uh, is it safe to uh, to do this PCI with one stand, let's say uh, 3.5, but I dilate it with a suboptimal pressure? Say the pressure is uh, to have a full expansion is uh, 10, then I would dilate it only 6 according to the distal vessel reference and to post dilated with the NC balloon or what do you comment? Or do we have to have a two stand uh, uh, covering the left main to the LED? Uh, yeah, if I use one stand in, in majority of cases, I use 3.5 stand. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of stands uh, widely available like 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 Zions or Altimaster or, or Cyro uh, uh, when you can go from 3.5 up to five or even more. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, so LAD diameter on the average is at least in my in our population is 3.5 uh, and uh, and the left main is uh, 4.5 up to up to five zero. Yeah? Uh, yeah. So if I do not use uh, intravascular imaging. And sometimes for left main, if there is a simple case, I don't do it. Uh, then that's my default strategy. 3.5 uh, for, for to cover from the left main to the LAD. Uh, and then uh, POT doesn't have to be NC balloon because in most of cases, you just want to move the struts of the stent and you need two, three atmospheres yeah, to post dilate the stent because stent opens if there is no resistance from the vessel, no plaque, no, no calcium, uh, then you don't need to have a, a, a very, very high pressure. So you, it, it doesn't have to be an NC balloon, yeah? any balloon, but short. Uh, and of course, uh, not you have to position not to distal, yeah? not to push the carina towards the, the ostrum of the, of the side branch. Uh, so this is my 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 my, my default strategy uh, for for a single uh, for a single stent. If you have some mm, uh, uh, suboptimal result at the proximal LAD, then we do something that we call dot. 
pot is proximal optimization, dot is distal optimization strategy. So, so, so when I have stand under expanded because of the uh, uh, stiffness of the vessel or, or hardness of the plug, I go with smaller balloon like 3.0 or, or 3.5 for the proximal LAD, NC balloon then, and I go high pressure, but not uh, over, I, I'm not oversizing, yeah, because that's the play of the of the fractal geometry of bifurcation. Yeah? So you have a main vessel proximal, which is the, the largest diameter, then you have main vessel distal, which is the smaller and the smallest one uh, in the, the, the side branch. Yeah? Uh, so if you if you uh, for example use three zero balloon, perhaps I would post delayed with 3.0 NC high pressure in the LAD uh, and and then and then pot POT in the, in the in the proximal left main and then with left main uh, you, you you should always keep in mind that as long as your circumflex wire is uh, jailed your guiding catheter will never point into the lumen of the vessel yeah it will oh, yeah constantly push on the edge of the stand. So you have to be very, very cautious because this is the moment when you can very easily uh, deform, crush or, 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 or uh, deformate the stand. Yeah? And the stand deformation we know from the Excel study, they found on the IVUS in a core lab, even though they, 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 the procedure was performed by you know very highly experienced centers and they use I was in the vast majority of cases, still in a core lab, they found more than 6% of cases there were there was a stand deformation at the ostium of the lead main, which was not noticed, recognized by the by the operators. And, and this is really important, the stand deformation was the independent predictor of maze in a three-year observation. So this is not a benign phenomenon. Huh? You will never notice it uh, in in angiography. Angiographically, it's beautiful result, but so but but if you deform, if, if you partially crush your stent at the ostium of, of left main, it may translate into future uh, outcomes. Yeah, into 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 maze. So what I do, as long as I have a, a circumflex wire jailed, I'm I'm pushing, uh, I'm pulling up. My guiding catheter. Uh, whenever I remove uh, uh, my gear from the left main or LED, and also I'm pulling up the the catheter out of the uh, ostium on the left main, where, where when I'm uh, pulling back the circumflex wire. Or there is also very nice and safe technique to just to drop one additional wire into the sinus of the, of, of, of Valsalva. Yeah? Yeah, uh, the floating wire. Of, 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 uh, of uh, aorta, yeah, and 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 then uh, there is a less risk uh, of um, damaging the ostium of the uh, of the left main stent. Yeah. Great discussion, Professor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, any any more comments? If no, uh, so let's let's now move to 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 the next uh, topic. Uh, and now the, the talk will be given by uh, uh, Dr. Dasat, uh, also from Indo Indonesia. Uh, and I'm really uh, curious to, 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 to hear to this uh, talk on the smaller balloon. Uh, so um, what can we do with uh, that small balloon like one millimeter PTC, PTCA uh, balloon? Uh, please share your experience and uh, your cases. Dr. Dasad, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much to Professor Flesia and all the speakers. Greetings, good afternoon, and all the watchers. So um, this afternoon, I'm going to share about my experience uh, in using this uh, small uh, balloon here around one millimeter comparing to uh, the other balloon. So to choose the balloon for either CTO or a bifurcation technique, especially if we do the DK class, uh, we try to use the balloon which, which has got the small tip entry. If it's possible, just a little bit bigger compared to the wire, 
not more than uh, normally the the available balloon will be 0 0.0115 something or 0 0.016 it's supposed to have a low crossing profile and it has got the short and well tapered tip uh, also the tip has to be quite strong so which means that it's not easily damaged or uh, becoming splayed uh, when we try to push the balloon and also especially for the uh, if we try to dilate the lesion that has got a lot of calcification we try to use the balloon which has got the very strong material that uh, won't burst easily yeah it's also if possible the balloon is quite strong so it will be resistant to the puncture because sometimes that you never know sometimes that when we uh, try to pass the balloon through the uh, cell of the stand uh, the cell of the stand sometimes may break and may puncture the uh, balloon easily and it's supposed to have a good coating so which means that uh, the balloon will cross easily and it has got a smooth uh, trackability. And do you remember that the design of the balloon has to have a strong shaft? So which means that we can push the balloon easily and also that it will be king resistant because uh, if the uh, shaft of the balloon king easily, it will be very difficult or almost impossible for us to um, introduce the balloon uh, further. And uh, as Dr. Mohammed has already uh, explained before about the CTO, so uh, this time I limit my talk uh, more into bifurcation rather than the CTO case. And also we have to remember sometimes that uh, uh, if we use a lot of balloon and then we uh, forget that whether the, the uh, marker is in the mid or the distal, sometimes if the marker is in the distal, we thought that it's uh, all, all already in the mi uh, middle of the uh, uh, things that we like to dilate and then we may, uh, may misjudge. And then once we uh, inflate the balloon, it's very difficult to um, introduce the balloon. We have to use a new balloon, yeah? And preferably, to uh, cut our time short, shorter. So if we have a rapid exchange balloon, if can be as good as over the wire balloon, uh, we prefer to use a rapid exchange. And of course, uh, the balloon has to have a reasonably uh, price. And for example, the balloon that I use a uh, uh, lot uh, in my uh, private practice, yeah, this uh, supplier, um, developed by company of Busnitz, uh, which is from Hong Kong. It has got a very small tip entry profile around 0 0.016, yeah. I also sometimes use the across CTO. I think the across CTO, I, I do believe it has got the tip entry profile, even though they claim it's 0 uh, 0.016, but uh, I think I think will be bigger than that, yeah. Because uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, my experience with across CTO not very good. Uh, most of the time, it cannot pass the uh, cell strut. The mini track it has got the uh, quite big tip entry profile, but sometimes uh, it's quite the shelf is quite strong and the pushability is quite good. Sometimes uh, we can be successful using a mini track. I think. Must, uh, I must say that better than a cross CTO. The other one is also uh, we use a balloon developed by a Japanese company, uh, Ika Jushi. Yeah, it has got, as we can see, the profile, the tip entry profile is 0 0.0157, which is quite small. And normally we use a, a shorter one. Uh, it has got uh, so far our experience with this Ica Juicy is quite good. Uh, as we can see, we use uh, uh, one millimeter diameter, and the ba balloon length is around six millimeter. The other balloon that we use is a mini track uh, developed by American company Abbott. Uh, we use one point two. The smallest one they have is one point two millimeter. 
and the length that we use sometimes is not uh, every length available in Indonesia, especially during this uh, pandemic, it's very difficult to import the uh, balloon from overseas. So sometimes, I mean, a uh, lot of hospital is uh, competing uh, ordering for the same balloon. Yeah, so sometimes we only can use that uh, available to us. So the uh, in case of mini track, we have only 10 millimeter in length, but uh, we luckily have a 1.2 millimeter in diameter in our collection. As we can see, sometimes the uh, information that is given is uh, so promising, but again, that uh, experience will be our best teacher. Um, we can see the mini track, the length. Actually, it has uh, it has six and eight millimeter length, but we don't have that in our shelf. Uh, the other one is across CTO that uh, I have already uh, explained a little bit. It's developed by this uh, Switzerland company across tech. Uh, I believe the tip entry profile is not uh, that small because sometimes it's very difficult to introduce further. Uh, but it has got a very uh, strong, I mean, that it can be um, implanted, uh, implanted up to 20 atmosphere. Yeah. And also it's very strong. It has got the problem. It has got the distal market, as I uh, told me uh, before, that we have to remember that uh, sometimes we think the balloon is already in the middle of the lesion, but actually it's uh, still, it hasn't crossed the lesion yet. And it's uh, normally we use the rapid exchange. Offer the wire also is seldomly available in Indonesia because not many um, cardiologists order for the offer the wire. That's the only reason. Sometimes I try to order, but uh, I cannot get it. And the size that we use is 1.1 millimeter, and the length is 10 millimeter. To my surprise, when this company, the APT company, come to see me and uh, told me try to use the balloon, uh, um, initially I'm a bit skeptical because uh, I think this uh, company just like a new kit in the block. Uh, it has got the balloon. Uh, they said it's a one millimeter and the length is nine millimeter. I thought it's going to be uh, disappointment to me, but to my surprise, the balloon did quite well. And this is again, it's, um, the uh, information that they give is quite promising. Uh, the tip entry profile also quite small, 0 0.016. The other thing that uh, this is uh, by the guy, uh, I know this guy, Ormiston from the New Zealand because I, I, I did my cardiology training in Australia. So this guy is uh, very good uh, in doing a benchmark study uh, about this uh, um, balloon. So this information is very useful. Sometimes what's happened if we push the balloon uh, too hard and then it doesn't go uh, anywhere, we have to stop and think about this, uh, maybe the cause of that uh, problem. I mean, the tip of the balloon may become damaged and the tip may become flared. Yeah? So we have to stop and then try to use the different balloon or the new balloon because it may damage the stand and also it may damage the artery further if we push the, too hard. And the only treatment for that is to do the kissing balloon. So that's why that uh, in uh, every bifurcation, we always to fin we uh, always have to finish it with the kissing technique. Uh, this is a simple uh, chart there yeah, to show that uh, how to perform the mini cross. I think all of you knowing about this from the step one till step four. Normally we don't have any problem because it's uh, straightforward. Uh, we have a problem when we try in step six, which is rewiring to the proximal strand sometimes can be a problem if the side branch is small or the angle between the side branch and the main branch is quite uh, small. Yeah, so sometimes, or 
the uh, length of the stand being crushed is too long, sometimes can be a problem. Uh, and then the second problem that we encounter is when we try to deliver balloon in the side plans. That's why that we need the small balloon. Yeah. So and then uh, sometimes we have to gradually increase the size of the balloon from one millimeter to one point five to uh, two and um, uh, a larger balloon according to the size of the side plans. And then for with the simple uh, class procedure, we always uh, have to finish with the kissing balloon. This is that uh, I took it from the uh, uh, the book, the yeah, manual of percutaneous or coronary intervention, which was just uh, I'm quite likely to get this book because just being released uh, uh, a few months ago. Yeah, by the guy uh, Emmanuel Bilekis, who is quite famous. Yeah, he's from I think from Minnesota uh, Hospital in America. So this is the the flow chart. Yeah. Always we have to, we only have to learn uh, two uh, things. One is the two tense strategy uh, for bifurcation or professional uh, standing strategy. The side brands needs to be, in the past we, uh, we were told that if the side brands is less than uh, two millimeter or two millimeter, uh, we do not need to be preserved. But my experience, sometimes even the side brands is 1.5 millimeter, we still have to, Preserve because uh, when it's become obstructed 100%, uh, patient develop chest pain. Yeah, and then uh, in the passive area, the enzyme will be elevated, which is not uh, good news. Uh, this is the the likelihood of the side plan occlusion. Of course, it depends on the location of the disease, the severity of the side plan's disease, and the morphology of the lesion itself whether it's, uh, it has got a lot of calcification and the length of the uh, obstruction. And like I said, that sometimes the bifurcation angle, when it's become extreme, it's very difficult to try to do a rewiring and then try to insert the balloon. Um, DK cross that uh, uh, I normally use this technique, yeah, DK cross for two stands, um, strategy. Always uh, uh, remember the size and the angle of the side branch because uh, sometimes that uh, when the size of the size branch is um, small and then we have a problem when we have to do the final kissing. Uh, we know that if the angle is 90, sometimes we can do the TAP uh, uh, technique, but if the angle is big, uh, quite narrow, Sometimes it uh, can become uh, difficult, or if the angle is over the 90, uh, sometimes it uh, can be difficult when we try to pass the uh, wire after we cross the stand and when we try to pass the uh, balloon afterward. I can, uh, like I said, that uh, uh, we can see here in the picture that the uh, when we, after we cross the uh, branch, uh, the stand in the side branch, and then we try to rewire through the cross stand, it can become a problem. But normally, uh, the uh, bigger problem when we try to pass the balloon, uh, almost when the stand that being used is small, almost impossible to use. Uh, a big balloon to pass the to the uh, stand strut, and also do, we have by experience we have to use a new balloon. Sometimes if the balloon has been used before, um, it's difficult to pass through the uh, stand strut. And this is what I'm talking about: is deliver the balloon in the side plans can be a difficult one. And again, that uh, we uh, have to uh, do the first kissing, yeah? always do the first kissing. And do remember uh, when we uh, use the, um, when we uh, dilate the main, uh, the main branch uh, vessel, 
yeah, we have to be careful not to oversize the balloon because it can cause uh, either the section or the development of the uh, problem uh, in the distal vessel. And then we uh, remove the side vents, no problem. And after that, uh, the second problem coming after we deployed the uh, stand in the main vessel. Yeah, uh, again, that uh, we have to uh, rewire the gel uh, side vents to the uh, to, to the distal part of the uh, main vessel stand. That can be a problem. Again, that we have to almost like uh, restart again. We have to pass the uh, smaller balloon, try to dilate the, the stand that being uh, crushed, and then. And then so, uh, uh, we have a, a problem when we try to advance the balloon. Sometimes the problem that the balloon that being used before, the small, the small uh, balloon that being used before cannot be reused. So we have to try to use the new one. And so that's why the, always the financial of the uh, patient uh, should be uh, thought into uh, consideration. And again, that we have to finish uh, the technique with the uh, kissing uh, balloon inflation at the end. And then uh, again, that uh, Professor Lesia has already uh, mentioned that we have to do the uh, pot technique in because the mo most of the time the diameter of the main uh, vessel uh, proximally will be bigger than the uh, uh, main vessel distally. Uh, this is the case that I like to uh, share. This is the uh, patient who had the, it's not a bypass, yeah, the uh, wire in the chest is uh, because of the patient had the congenital abnormality and was operated uh, 20 years before uh, he came to see me. And as we can see, the left man is very, very tight. And I try to do the uh, this is what I did is the uh, DK crust, yeah, but step by step because it's not bifurcation, but this uh, bifurcation, but it has got a lot of bifurcation. I think two bifurcation. So I did I did a step by step, and then I finished by doing a, a kissing stand and also a pot techniques in the uh, left man. Um, in the you know sometimes uh, like professor lesia has already mentioned that sometimes when we try to dilate the uh, we use the stand in the lad and then uh, the same stand that we have to dilate in the element we have to uh, get the information from the uh, manufacturer uh, how big the stand can be expanded in the left main. Normally they have us, uh, we have a special chart. So we know that in like in this case that we, we use a, a 3.0 and then we dilate it to, to 3.7 yeah, in the left main. Uh, and it's still okay because we have already uh, checked to the manufacturer before. And this is a bifurcation is um, as you can see is a, a sim simple bifurcation is a zero one one and this is after we invited in the side branch and then we can see that there is a, uh, obstruction in the uh, main branch in the round 60. So, uh, unfortunately, we uh, seldomly use the IFUS in Indonesia because of the financial reason, because sometimes that we have to charge more to the patient when we are using the IFUS and not many uh, investors, yeah, unfortunately, like to invest in IFUS in Indonesia uh, because, like I said, that uh, it uh, create uh, extra costs. As you can see, this is the, and then uh, I, this is after the, I delete the, uh, I put the stand in the uh, main branch and I finish with the uh, kissing um, and then do the pot in the proximal uh, main branch vessel.
And this is the case that uh, the other case that uh, the patient has got the bifurcation. Yeah, uh, small uh, again that uh, Indonesian uh, most of the Indonesian patient is quite small. This is a lady. It has got the brands. Uh, the diameter is only 2.0, 2.25. Um, again, that uh, I normally use the guiding catheter is seven fans because sometimes the 6.5, sometimes when the we use the uh, stand, uh, uh, sometimes it can be very tight. Um, so I prefer, and sometimes also that uh, I don't use, uh, hardly use the radial uh, approach. Yeah, most of the time I use, if it's difficult case, we know the, uh, the angiography or from the uh, CT scan result that we know that it's going to be difficult. I normally use the femoral approach uh, just to make my life uh, easier when the things go wrong. Yeah. So this uh, this one we can see that we uh, follow the uh, strategy. Uh, this time I use a two uh, two stand. Uh, strategy. Yeah. So I implanted the stand in the diagonal first, and then the following the uh, flow chart. Um, this one. Huh? The third one doesn't, huh? no, only two. Okay. Okay. Yeah, as you can show that there is a shift uh, of the uh, plug from the uh, side branch to the main branch here. Yeah. It's quite significant. And this is the final result, uh, like I said, after we, uh, we did the, the, as you can see, the size of the uh, proximal and the distal of the ID is not much uh, different. So sometimes that uh, I didn't do the pot if I think the size is not, is not um, uh, that uh, big because I, I normally finish with the uh, crust, yeah. So crust itself, of course, the, the summation of the balloon in the side branch and the main branch will be two thirds than the uh, size of the uh, both of the. So it's a bit like a similar like a, a POT uh, strategy. And this is the final result. No, Sorry, the uh, the moving picture is very slow. Okay, so as you can see, that uh, the final result is uh, quite reasonable. And this is the another patient comes to see me with the angina. And initially, when we uh, took the first uh, picture, it looks quite okay. But after that, the second picture, we can see the very tight LAD. But I cannot see uh, the osteal of the diagonal uh, clearly. Um, initially, I thought that uh, this will be, uh, there is no uh, obstruction, I think, in the uh, diagonal. So what I did is uh, professional standing. Uh, we can see it's very tight in the LED. Luckily, we put the wire in the uh, branch because it's a big branch and uh, if something goes wrong, uh, at least we have uh, a wire already. So I put the wire also in the side branch. And then, as you can see, uh, uh, 
after I dilate the uh, after I insert the stand in the main branch, there is no flow in the diagonal. So, uh, like uh, my feeling was right, uh, there is uh, something in the osteal of the diagonal, and the patient developed chest pain and the blood pressure uh, uh, lowering down. So. Uh, the state's a little bit uh, panicking. So finally, what I did is uh, again that we do the uh, reverse crossing. Yeah, the, so we have to put another stand in the uh, diagonal. Yeah, and the result is quite good uh, after that. This is the final result. And again, that we can see we do the uh, final, we do the, we did the pot uh, technique in the proximal of the LED. Yeah, uh, so we can see it's a very big uh, diagonal here. Yeah, it becomes quite clear now. Okay, I think that's about all the case that I like to share. And now it's uh, I open for another discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, great presentation uh, uh, from the real world. Uh, how you know uh, small balloons and the the, the experience of these complex techniques can help uh, in 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 doing complex procedures. Um, and also, I liked uh, this this review of, of small balloons. Uh, most of uh, balloons you presented uh, are also available in in in, in Europe. So uh, it's really very impressive when we see that the the tip entry profile uh, is more and more close to zero point zero fourteen. Yeah, it's almost the the the, the size of the. Uh, of, of, of the wire. wire. Of yep. course, uh, it's not only about the, the, the tip uh, entry profile. We know that uh, sometimes you use a balloon with slightly bigger uh, profile and it goes smooth because it's, it's a play between the, uh, uh, the diameter of the tip, but also, you know, the, 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 uh, the shape, uh, the smoothness of the transition from, from the, uh, uh, the smoothness of the taper from, from the tip itself to, to, to the balloon. So uh, there are multiple factors uh, influencing, you know, the, the general performance of, of this kind of uh, um, uh, tools. Uh, but really, uh, uh, recently we could have observed uh, uh, a great improvement, uh, very very uh, improvement in this in this technology. So, uh, any any questions or comments? I have one comment uh, for POT because uh, you raised the question whether we should always perform POT or 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 sometimes not. So the answer is simple because just to keep in mind that vessel tapers uh, after giving branches. So normally when there are no branches, there is no, the, the, the diameter is the same. After the takeoff of any branch, uh, the vessel diameter has to go down. And now there is a simple rule that the bigger the side branch, uh, the bigger the difference between the proximal and distal diameter on, of the main vessel. So if you see a large diagonal, there has to be a, a, a jump in, in diameters. Yeah? And of course, we, we should all, know, I think you all know this FINE principle that uh, uh, the proximal diameter is the sum of diameter of branches multiplied by 0 0.678 or 0 0.7 in, 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 in uh, short. Yeah. So, so uh, if there is a large branch, uh, a sizable branch, you should always perform PLT because there will be a, a, a difference. I just have a look uh, at the chat. Still, no, no, no more questions. Uh, uh, some I know that Dr. Ali will have to uh, Dr. Ali will have to leave soon. Uh, he's busy in his uh, in his lab. So, uh, if no more questions, then 
So we, it was a pleasure to, to have you, Dr. Uh, Ali, uh, uh, and have a good, uh, good re rest of, of, of your day. Uh, and we go uh, uh, go on, then we will continue. And now it's time uh, for for my talk. So now I will share the screen. Uh, okay. And go back to my presentation. Hope you see my presentation now. And, and this presentation is dedicated to the tortuosity and uh, complexity of the procedures uh, we perform. So there are three uh, important uh, uh, features of uh, uh, contemporary coronary intervention, the challenges. One is the, the patient agent comorbidity. So the patient uh, clinical issues, then the lesion issues, anatomical complexity, and of course, uh, uh, a very important thing is the LV dysfunction, uh, which uh, influenced the, the, um, uh, the outcome of the procedure very significantly. So what we could have, could have observed in the recent years is the growing number of complex coronary patients. So you see that that's the data from the England and Wales uh, registry. Uh, and you see that year by year, the percentage of octogenarians increases, yeah? So, so from, from 90% to more than 28, almost 29 in, in 2014. Also the number of patients with comorbidities like diabetes or, or in our uh, chronic kidney disease also seems to increase uh, uh, over the years. Uh, this means that uh, we will have growing number of complex procedures. So we have complex patients and complex procedures. So on the left-hand side, you see uh, what is the percentage of the CHIP procedures. CHIP means the complex uh, interventions in high-risk patients. Uh, and you see the number is growing faster than the number of total PCI procedures in the registry. In the middle, you see the percentage of these CHIP procedures. And for example, uh, on the right-hand side, you see the uh, the, the need for using uh, rotation at the rectomy. This is a consequence of this uh, growing complexity uh, uh, of PCI patients. And we also know that this complex, complex complexity translates into clinical outcomes. So the MACE uh, rate is almost linearly, uh, linearly mm, related to, to the syntax score. Uh, uh, which means that the more complexity, the, 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 the more lesions, the, the higher current complexity, the worse outcomes. Uh, uh, so there are two things uh, mostly important, very important, critical in, 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 in this situation. One is the uh, operator experience. So in this chart, you see what's the 12 month mortality following uh, complex PCI procedures. Uh, 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 regarding to the um, operator's experience. So you see the operator's volume uh, uh, at the, uh, the y-axis and you see that the higher the volume per year, the lower uh, mortality after, uh, after three, 12 years observation. The second issue is to, to have an access and to be familiar with uh, uh, the special gear and uh, special techniques. Uh, what do I mean uh, by this uh, special uh, gear and techniques? So these are specialty wires and balloons, micro catheters, guide extension catheters, uh, coronary atherectomy or little tripsy devices, uh, special complex bifurcation and CTO techniques, and of course, uh, uh, a mechanical circulatory support, which is very often uh, really uh, needed. Uh, now a few words about uh, one of the simplest and in the same time one of the most uh, useful tool, which is a guide extension catheter, uh, providing uh, additional backup support and improving access to complex lesion, especially in a situation when you have an inadequate uh, backup support of the guiding catheter, uh, difficult coronary access, angulated tortuous vessels, uh, and uh, calcified lesions. Sometimes you, you can see all of those uh, features in one patient. So this is a very nice example of 
uh, uh, inadequate backup support, uh, difficult coronary access, and a calcified uh, vessel. So you see this right coronary artery. We are really struggling you know, to get these amplats uh, into the right coronary. It was an impossible, and the support was not good enough through this uh, corval frame, uh, frame of the corval uh, valve. And it was only a guide extension catheter who could be could have been you know delivered uh, uh, um, selectively into the uh, uh, right coronary artery and, and allowed us for uh, drug allotting stand implantation and obtaining this this good result. Uh, there are also multiple other applications of guide extension catheter, and not everyone is uh, familiar with this. So you can use this uh, uh, as a retrograde wire pickup. We call guide extension uh, supported uh, uh, um, retro reverse cart uh, intervention in, in, in CTO. Uh, this catheter may be used for the maintenance of side branch wire during main vessel rotation atherectomy. So you can do rotation atherectomy via guide extension catheter. I will show you the, the, the table, uh, what size of burr can you use to given size of the guide extension. Uh, this tool enables to perform OCT imaging of aorto osteal lesions. So if you want to visualize left osteal left main, for example, uh, you can engage guide extension deep into the left main and perform OCT. Uh, and you will be able to, because the light goes through the thin wall of the guide extension and you can vis visualize uh, the osteum of the main uh, also. Uh, it can uh, uh, help in super selective contrast injection. Sometimes if, if you have a large uh, dominant left corner system and you want to just inject into some obtuse marginal branch of the circumflex, you can use a lot of contrast. By using this guide extension, you can super selectively inject contrast uh, and, and save some, some, some uh, dye. Uh, and also can be used for aspiration uh, thrombectomy. So how to use uh, guide extension catheter in our general da uh, daily practice? There are a couple of techniques like balloon assisted tracking, balloon anchoring, inchworm technique, uh, and the uh, stand and shifting technique. So let's start with this balloon assisted tracking. I use uh, this technique only when I want to pass a guide extension catheter through uh, already deployed stand. So with this technique, uh, uh, I just put a, a, a small balloon at the tip of the, of the guide extension and both inflated balloon and guide extension catheter are tracked together inside the vessel lumen. So this technique, and you see, as you can see on the right hand side of the slide, helps uh, in avoiding uh, damaging the, the, the edge or proximal edge of the stent. Otherwise, I don't use this technique in, in the regular uh, uh, coronaries. In a, uh, another is a balloon anchoring. So this is the, the, the ex uh, example of, of this technique. So you first inflate your balloon distal to the, uh, uh, in the distal part of the vessel and use this balloon as an anchor. And, and I hope you see uh, once again in balloon inflation, and then you see the tip of the guide extension uh, going down uh, down the vessel. Uh, this is very useful. Uh, it works in vast majority of cases, although this is not the safest technique to advance uh, guide extension. Sometimes you may create some 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 dissections. So the 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 most safe technique I get I think is this. Uh, inchworm technique. So you inflate the balloon just distally, very, very distally to the tip of the of the guiding uh, guide extension. So you are almost uh, uh, touching uh, the tip of the guide extension to the balloon, and you advance the guide extension during deflation of the balloon. And step by step, you can very safely get you the tip of your guide extension very distally, as you can appreciate on the right-hand side, you see the, uh, the tip of guide extension reaches the, the crux, the crux of, the, of, the, uh, of the heart. So uh, we, we took the, 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 the long passage 
uh, throughout the, the, the right coronary artery. So this technique is, is uh, very useful and, and very safe in the same time. And finally, once you manage to cross uh, tortuosity or the, severe, the, 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 the most severe lesion, uh, you can very easily pass the stand distal to the, to, to, to the place when you want to uh, uh, inflate or at the uh, very site of the uh, um, implantation uh, and by retracting or unsheathing, uh, otherwise, in, in other words, uh, uh, the stent, uh, you keep the stent in the position and after a retracting uh, a guide extension, you are ready to, to deploy it, uh, to deploy your, your stent. So, so let me show you one example of 93 year old uh, lady with severe class three angina, but very active uh, with preserved cognitive function hypertension, chronic kidney disease, uh, and fortunately good LV function, uh, 65%. So that's the coronary angiography performed in a, in a local hospital uh, when, the, when she was admitted um, due to severe uh, chest pain on exertion, but class three, as, as I mentioned. Uh, and what they found, they found a very severe calcified lesions in the tortuous both LAD and uh, left coronary, left circumflex, uh, uh, right coronary artery, uh, there were only uh, minor disease. So, so this is the, the carpet lesions, both tight and both uh, in an angulated uh, tortuous and severely calcified uh, uh, vessels. So they tried uh, uh, to do PCI. So this is the failed attempt, just one of the recordings you see that there is a femoral approach, uh, regular Jatkins, not the best support, and they were not able to deliver any, any, any balloon to the lesion. So they decided to send the patient to, to, to my hospital. Uh, and just a couple of days uh, uh, later, I had the patient on my table. So I started with IVUS, but I was not able to deliver uh, catheter neither to LAD nor to the circumflex. So what can I show you is just the, the ostium of the circ, but even here you see that almost circumferential calcium uh, in the vessel. So, so definitely uh, after this image and uh, knowing that the, our colleagues from another hospital failed, uh, we need to use uh, rotation at the rectomy. So we just pass the wire uh, of a micro catheter. Uh, uh, we pass the, the, the rota wire uh, extra support uh, uh, rota wire to the distal circ. And uh, what you see here is uh, a rotation at the rectomy uh, with 125 burr uh, and, and uh, 160 RPM. Uh, uh, still, you know, after uh, rotation at the rectomy, still you see I try to 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 deliver um, uh, 2.5 and C balloon over two wires. So uh, that's the body wire technique. So one is rota wire, a second one is uh, a regular wire, extra support wire. Still not able to uh, to to get the, down the the balloon. Uh, so then I decided to use uh, uh, to use a guide extension catheter. Uh, I was able to pass a smaller balloon, not NC, but the regular um, semi-compliant balloon. Uh, and with anchor technique, uh, uh, I got the expressman uh, distal uh, to the mid portion of the of the circ. So you see that the expressman overcoming uh, a tortuosity. Of the of the left uh, circumflex artery, uh, then uh, after uh, getting in the proximal part uh, to stay on the safe side, I use this inchworm technique. So you see the the, the balloon is positioned very close to the tip uh, of the expressman. Then I deflate the balloon and over deflate the balloon slowly, slowly. And, uh, I'm making some progress uh, uh, with the tip of the uh, of the expressman uh, uh, guide, uh, guide extension. Uh, this guide extension is available in Poland uh, for not so long time. Uh, a long time, just I think we got them uh, first time in in this year. Uh, it has some some exceptional features, uh, of course, as as most of these uh, tools. Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, covered with uh, hydrophilic substance. Uh, it has the mesh uh, braiding. Uh, 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 the uh, the nitinol pusher, pusher. Uh, but what is uh, exceptional to this catheter, there are two uh, features that the, the exchange segment is longer uh, than in, in, in the competition, competitors' uh, devices. So you see it on the, on the left-hand side. Uh, so this is 35 uh, centimeters from the tip of the catheter, uh, which allows to keep the entrance port uh, out of the you know, aortic arch or subclavian artery. You, the if the transition is at the level of the aortic arch, sometimes when we have issues, especially with bigger uh, um, stents, uh, there may be some some potential damage, uh, and the debris may may go to the to the uh, to the to carotids uh, uh, and cause some some thrombotic events, which we don't like. So I think this this uh, longer transition segment is 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 a good, is, is a good idea. Another uh, uh, very interesting uh, characteristics of this device is this. Uh, uh, a, a double twin side holes uh, at uh, close to the tip of the catheter, and the idea is to once you get the the, gui the guide extension into the lesion uh, and you uh, occlude the vessel uh, due to the, the 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 delivery of this guiding catheter, you can still uh, provide an anti-grade flow to the vessel to the distal coronary through this uh, twin side holes. So this is a really interesting concept uh, uh, worth trying uh, uh, because definitely uh, the ischemia uh, will, be, uh, be, uh, will be lower. Uh, there will be less ischemia during the procedure in this patient. So once we, get, uh, we got the, this uh, express man uh, guide extension uh, into the vessel, now the rest is very, simple and very smooth. So you see a, a nice uh, smooth passage of the uh, drug eluting stents, 2.5 over 28, uh, uh, stand inflation uh, after unsheathing uh, uh, with the guide extension and post dilatation with 3O and C balloon with a very nice, uh, very nice result. To make uh, everything short, uh, uh, that's the same steps uh, were performed for the LAD. So, uh, so again, rota wire over the microcatheter, then 125 burr. We use exactly the same burr we used for the for the circ uh, with the say, RP, same RPM uh, uh, stand uh, three uh, three O over 28 uh, uh, with the help of X, the express man, of course, and. And that's that's the final result in in in, in this patient. Uh, so I didn't use uh, a rotation at the rectomy via a guide extension catheter, but uh, you can find a nice um, paper on the PCR online uh, how to perform safely and efficiently coronary uh, atherectomy via guiding guide extension catheter, and just to 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 let you know that uh, uh, through the six French guide extension, you can use 125 burr. If you use seven French guide extension, then 1.5 burr uh, will go as well. Yeah, will go uh, as well. Uh, so, so you can you can use guide extension to deliver the the rota uh, um, rota burr uh, 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 also. So. Uh, to summarize, I wanted to say that the number of patients with complex coronary lesions is still growing, uh, and the routine PCI approach may be ineffective and harmful. Yes, yeah? so so if you fail with your procedure, of course, uh, as uh, in this lady I presented, uh, you may do some far harm to to the patient. So the use of modern techniques and modern gear allows obtaining the optimal PCI. Uh, result and I find the the Express Mind Guide Extension uh, as a very simple and effective tool to assist with this uh, complex procedures. So now I thank you very much for your attention and. Uh,
it's time for for discussion and for questions. I think we still have some uh, some we are slightly above. Uh, 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 I still have. A, I, I think we have still five minutes to 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 discuss. So, any comments? So, so perhaps, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just like to ask your experience. Sometimes when we use a guiding uh, extension catheter, uh, different guiding uh, catheter will make it different. Sometimes that when I try to uh, put the stand in the distal of the RCA. When I tried, uh, if I use the uh, AL1, uh, comparing with the uh, JR4, it's much easier for me to uh, pass the guiding extension catheter with the JR4 comparing to AL1. Sometimes I fail to introduce the further, especially when I try to put the balloon or to put the stand because the the shaft of the balloon of the stand make it more uh, difficult uh, for the AL1 to be able to engage in the ostium or the RCA. What is your experience of that? Yeah, it, 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 it all depends uh, on the shape of the, the takeoff of the, of the right coronary artery. So, so if you have a, uh, in vast majority, if this just perpendicular shape then, then of course, uh, GL4, uh, GR4 is, is is the right sh shape to go and 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 to start. Uh, although in majority of uh, right coronary complex cases, especially for for CTO, my default catheter is uh, AL1 for right coronary artery. Unless I have small lady, uh, then I use a AL0.75. Um, uh, but uh, it's it's a matter of uh, you know of the of the uh, the angle uh, of the engaged part of the of the amplus catheter and the angulation of the of the of the right coronary artery. Sometimes uh, amplus uh, comes very deep into the left main and touches the uh, uh, the opposite wall of the of the vessel. And perhaps that's 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 the reason you encountered some 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 issues with the, with delivering devices. My my routine uh, um, guiding is uh, GI four unless for CTO. Then in, in vast majority of cases, I use seven French amplas left. Can I have a comment, uh, Professor? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the assessment, as I know, they they have uh, five friends and six friends, the guiding at the get extension catheter. So, uh, which one do you choose, uh, the five friends or the six friends, and other brands such as the Guidezilla? Uh, it has uh, six strands, but the catheter is able six in six. Uh, which one is best for uh, the delivery of the stand or balloon to have yeah, better support? I, I, yes, uh, um, uh, I think that uh, if I have a, uh, it depends on the size of the vessel. Yeah, so if I, I have really a, a sizable right coronary or, or, or big left coronary artery. And I'm using seven catheter uh, from the beginning. Then I use uh, seven French uh, guiding guide extension as well. Uh, the typical situation when I use seven French guide extension is the reverse card CTO technique. So when I go from the left to the right, uh, and I and I perform reverse card in the mid portion of the right coronary artery, and then I want to uh, get my retrograde wire into the guide extension lumen, then it's easier when you use seven French uh, uh, as opposed to the six French because the lumen, the lumen is, is, is bigger. The question you asked regarding Godzilla was, was what? Because six in six, it's, it's typical, you know, for all guide extension, yeah? So, so you can use six French and uh, uh, guiding and, uh, and six French uh, um, guide extension. We use, uh, Again, our default gui guiding catheter is, is launcher, yeah, which is uh, a yeah. large lumen uh, guiding catheter. Yeah? So, so it's easy to, to go with Expressman or, or, or any, okay, any guide extension uh, through the six French. And in most cases, most of cases, because we do most of cases with six French catheter, we use six, six French guide extension. Yeah? Perhaps one, one word of caution 
because uh, this anchor technique is very effective. Uh, it, it works in, 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 in almost every case, but uh, it's not as safe as this inchworm technique. So, so what I recommend for the beginners is just to go slowly, step by step, inflate the balloon very close to the tip of the, uh, of the guide extension, and then ask your nurse or your colleague to deflate the balloon. And in the same time, when you see that the, 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 the balloon is collapsing, just push uh, the guide extension down over the deflating balloon. This is much more safe in, in, in terms of risk of uh, dissection or perforation than the, the anchor technique. Yeah? When, when you really can use a, a, a big force, uh, but also the risk of damage is, is higher. Okay, so since we are running uh, uh, of time and there are no more questions, so uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, all the speakers. Uh, I, I found your presentations very useful and uh, myself, I learned a lot. So this is, uh, this is uh, one of the beauty of this kind of courses that uh, uh, you are learning uh, by teaching, uh, uh, and especially when we can exchange our experience between Europe and 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 Asia, uh, I find it every time very very useful and and very practical to me. So thank you very much uh, for your great talks. Uh, thank you to all the people um, uh, watching us. Uh, I know that the 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 webinar is also. Uh, uh, available on YouTube, uh, is, there is a, a live stream on uh, on YouTube. So I hope that many many people uh, could uh, ha had an opportunity uh, uh, to to see us. And of course, uh, thank you very much, APT Medical, for for inviting us and uh, for making this uh, very nice and useful webinar uh, uh, possible. So thank you so much to you all, and uh, have a good day and. Uh, I wish you all the best in your daily practice and daily procedures uh, uh, with your patients. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.